What does the word say? What does the word say? If you don't know what the word say, you will say anything. What does the word say? What does the word say? What does the word say? If you don't know what God's word is saying, you don't know what to say. So that's why we say, what does the word say and what will you say? What does the word say? What does the word say? If you don't know what God's word is saying, you will say anything. That's why you need to know what the word say. Well, how are you again? My name is Reverend, my name is Robert Berry. Good to be here with you this morning again, or this evening, or whatever time, or midnight, whatever time that it is there that we are coming to you by way of television. I'd like to say to you, <clears throat> it is a wonderful opportunity and a privilege to bring the word of God to you. May we have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your wisdom and knowledge and understanding how to handle every circumstances and situation in life. That uh, for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to handle every situation in life, that people will see you and not me. And Father, that they will give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you would cause my tongue to be the pen of a ready writer, rightly dividing the word of truth, and that, and that people will have ears to hear what the Lord is saying to them today. And we give you the praise for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You know, there are a lot of contractors in the world today, and <clears throat> they build a lot of things. But Christ is saying to you and to me that there is something that we need to build on. We need to build a structured life that's in Christ, a life that's filled with his blessings, with his authority, with his anointing to do exactly what he would have us to do. So all of us are building, whether we have a house bill or a church bill or a theater bill or whatever that is building or an automobile or a car, it makes a difference what you're building on. So in Matthew, the seventh chapter and the 24th verse, it says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man that build his house upon a rock and the rain descendeth and the flood comes and the wind blow and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall not be, shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descend and the flood comes and when the wind blow, it beat upon that house and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sins, and the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So when we begin to build in life, Christ wants want us to build on the right foundation, and that is in him. And there's no other foundation that is laid that can be built on except in Jesus Christ. So therefore, he said now, therefore, whosoever hears these sins of man, mine. So where are you going to hear the word? So when you go to hear the word, it makes a difference where you go. Where you go, the church you attend is life and death. Because he says, and let us go to Romans uh, 10 chapter and the 17th verse 10 17 so it says so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so what you hear causes you to build 
as a believer or an unbeliever, whether on a, the right foundation or the wrong foundation. You will build on the rock or you will build on the sand. So hearing these sands of mine, and whosoever hear these sands of mine and build, are you hearing? So it's saying, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing is by the word of God. So what foundation are you building on? Are you building on what you are hearing from the word of God? Or are you building on something else? Are you building on the sand? Which means in order to build on the rock, you have to be a believer. You have to know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are building on the sand, whether you understand it or not. You are building. And there are some of us who are Christians, uh, are not living like we should, but we're still we are building, and we're going to have to give an account of how we build. Because God holds us responsible. He said, therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of man, and do with them, I will liken unto him as a wise man. You become wise when you come to know Christ. He gives you that wisdom and that knowledge and that understanding to handle every circumstances and situation that you will face in life because he gives you wisdom. Remember in James it said, any man who lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth who give it, who give it, which means if you ask, you will get it. But now he said, now, don't ask, but what? A man that's acting foolish, a man that's what? That's not trusting in the word of God. So a man not trusting in the word of God, he's not going to do, or she's not going to do what they need to do. And plus, most of all, what? They cannot hear. They cannot hear. So if you can't hear, then you won't become wise. Because what? You're not hearing what you need to hear because you're not hearing what God is saying. And how does God's word say? God's word is heard. It comes to a minister. That's why many of us as ministers are going to have to give an account of what we are preaching and teaching because what? We're not laying the route the right foundation for people to build upon, for them to really believe in and trust in and rely on and depend upon Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Then it said in that 17th verse again, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then the 14th verse asks us a question in that 10th chapter. It says, how then shall they hear, or how can they call on him in whom they have not heard? Then it says in the 13th verse, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you have to call upon his name in order to build on the right foundation. So what are you, are you building foolishly? Or are you building wisely? So it's your responsibility to get in the place that where you need to hear the word of God from a man of God. And listen, don't jump off, don't cut the television off, or from a woman of God. From a man of God or a woman of God. And when you begin to hear, you can be a wise builder. <clears throat> so what kind of builder are you? Are you building on the rock or are you building on the sand? I'll be right back. You need to be where you can hear the word of God.
What did we say? As you hear, you can become wise. Without hearing God's word, you cannot become wise in dealing in the affairs of life. Because life always presents problems. Jesus said, though, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And he said there'll be troubles and trials and tribulation. But he said, be a word of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So trials and tribulation are going to come. But when you are wise and you are hearing wisely, you are able to deal wisely with the affairs of life. Life is going to be. And it's what you know in order to deal when circumstances and situations that come about in life. If you don't know how to deal wisely, then how are you going to know two and two is four? Are you going to take two and two is two? No. Life adds up. You need to know how to multiply, how to divide, and how to subtract. And by you being wisely in life, you know how to deal with the affairs of life. And he says again, therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine, you have to hear Jesus' word, and the word is his word right here, the Bible. The Bible can handle any circumstances or situation that come about in life, but you got to be wise to know how to take his word and deal with that affair. Yes. To take his word and to deal with that, fair, that affair of life or that facts or what they're saying. Taking his word, knowing how, hearing his word and knowing how to deal with sickness and disease. That it says, by his strife ye were healed. And if ye were, then ye are healed by his power and by what? His word. He sent his word and it healed them. And it did not return unto him for void. Wherever he sent his word, his word worked, and it did not return to him void. Why? Because the people heard what the word said, and they dealt with it wisely. And what? People began to be healed, set free, and delivered. That's why I say it makes a difference what church you go to. A lot of people are sick because they haven't heard about Christ's healing. And they haven't heard what Jesus said. He said, hear these sins of mine about sickness and disease. He said, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. So do you believe in laying on hands? Do you, are, can you deal wisely by hands being laid on you? Or can you deal wisely with all, anointing them with all. Can you deal with that wisely or believe in that wisely according to what his words say? Hear these sins of mine. So again, it say, and I will liken unto him as a wise man. So which means that he gives you all the wisdom and knowledge that you need to handle every circumstances, every situation in life. So my brothers and sisters, the reason why there are so many problems, well, really, you don't have no problem because he just told us how to handle this problem. Handle our problem, that we are able to hear these sayings of mine, and I will liken on you as a wise man, able to deal with the affairs of life. So, really, you don't have no problem. All you need is God. All you need is his word in order to handle a problem. Your child in jail, all you need is to hear what God has to say. He will make you wise and how to deal for your son to come out of life. You don't have enough money, then you need to hear God's word concerning money, how to deal wisely with the affairs of life so you can have money and have more than enough to take care of your needs and to be a blessing to somebody else. Make you wise, wise. God is not a man that he should lie. 
He tell you how to handle. He tell you how to, to get the drug dealers out of your community. He'll tell you how to get the pimps off your corner. He'll tell you how to keep rape and robbering from happening in your neighborhood. It's not legislature. It's Christ. His hearing what he's saying, what his what his word is saying. How to deal wisely, hearing these sins of mine, and I will liken unto him as a wise man. Liken unto him, him who? Him who has the word of God. Him who belongs to Christ. Him who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Him. Him means that what? Whosoever will. Listen to his saying and put him in the practice. And he is the one that will work the work through you. He will cause you to hear. And then by what you are hearing about him will cause you to be wise. Yes, wise handling the affairs of life. So what's going on with you? What's happening in your neighborhood? You can't get a job? Well, do you need to hear from God? You need to hear to be wise in what he is saying and his saying about how you need to get a job blessing you that you are able to get a job that you are able to what to take care of circumstances and situation why get a job so you're able to pay taxes so you're able to be what a blessing to what the nation blessing to different people in the world that your tax paying helps what support paying, paving the street red lights all these things that goes on what they need money to take care of that and if you are not working then you what <laughs> yes, you are. You are on welfare. And Jesus don't want you to be on welfare. He wants you to fare well in life. That where you hear wisely from him how to deal with not being employed. So the way you become employable is what? Is hearing his word on what his word has to say about you getting a job. Well, I don't have the education. Jesus said, I wouldn't, Jesus didn't say I would send you to Yale University or I would send you to this university or I would send you to this school, that school. He said, hear these sins of mine. Hear these sins of mine. And I will liken unto him as a wise man. Although education is good, but God's word is better. You know how to deal with the affairs of life. Nobody could teach you. Nobody could take advantage of you because you know how to deal wiser in life. During slavery, there's a lot of things that went on in slavery. Look at many men who came out doing good. Look at Booker T. Washington. Look at Sojourner Truth. They didn't have all the education that you would think about, but what? They had it. They had the wisdom and knowledge of God that they was able to deal wisely in life. Look at George Washington Carver. A man, one peanut. All he got out of one peanut. Why? He heard the sayings of Jesus that made him wise in dealing with the peanut that what? All the families of heaven, all the families of the earth was blessed. Why? Because of George Washington Carver and you can be just like him. I'll be back in a minute. Well, nice to be with you this morning or this evening or at midnight or whatever time it is that we are speaking to you. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is our healer, our deliverer and our savior. The one that heals us from all sickness and disease. 
that at any time any sickness or disease touches our body, it dies immediately because the greater one lives in us. And Father, we give you all the praise for it and thank you that you give them ears to hear what thus says the Lord about healing and how they can be healed today, whether they are in the hospital or on their bed of affliction or walking about with sickness and disease in their body, how you work then that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You heal yesterday, you heal today, and you always be healing until the end of time. And we thank you, Father, that it will manifest itself as we minister to the people today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. All right, turn to Luke, the eighth chapter and the 40th verse. And it says, and it came to pass that while Jesus was returning, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come to his house. For he, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years old, and she lie dying. But as, he, but as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had, which had spent all her living upon physician, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood strayed, stayed. All right. All right. All right. Now, what are you saying? I'm saying that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, the physician, or Jesus, the doctor, or Jesus, the healer. He can be your physician, your doctor, who has never left anyone with the disease that they came to him about. Listen what happened to here again now. It came to pass that when Jesus was returning, the people glad to receive him for they were waiting for him. Who are you waiting on? They're in the operating room. Are you waiting on your doctor? Those who are there on their sick bed in the hospital, are you waiting on the doctor? Or are you like Zacchaeus, I mean like Jairus, waiting on Jesus? The people were waiting on him, and Jairus was one of them that was waiting for Jesus. And when Jesus came down through, Jairus fell at his feet and began to worship him and asked him by coming to his house to heal his daughter, his only daughter that was about 12 years old. Who is your physician? Is it your physical doctor? Or is it your spiritual doctor, which is Jesus Christ? This is his word. His word will bring it about to you, but are you waiting on him? Are you looking to him? to heal you? Are you looking to him to take care of your physical needs? Are you looking to him to take care of your sickness and diseases? Are you looking to him? Remember, they were waiting on him. And as Jesus was returning, they began to approach him. They fell. He fell, Jairus fell at his feet and began to worship him and talk to him about his daughter. After talking to him, another woman approached. She approached a woman, the 43rd verse, a woman 
having an issue of blood. But remember, Zacchaeus' daughter was dying. Not getting any better, she was dying. And he asked her, asked him to come to his house. And then in another verse, it says that Zacchaeus said, I'm not worthy. Just speak the word only. And the word was spoken. What happened here? They waited on Jesus. Jesus began to work as a healer. His word is what heals you, but faith in his word, believing what you are asking him, he can do that. That's why you need to hear from a preacher, not maybe he would heal you, or if it's his will to heal you, that's why he came. He came that you can have life and have it, have it more abundantly. So if he came that you might have life, he didn't come that the steel killed into the straw. Satan came for that. But he said he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not sickness and disease, not your children dying. Are you dying? Christ came that you might have life. He is our healer. He will heal you of your sickness and disease. Listen as we read on further here. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. An issue of blood for 12 years. Isn't that amazing? Zacchaeus' daughter was 12 years old. Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. The woman had a disease for 12 years. It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are or how long you have had that disease. Jesus is your healer. He will heal you. He will cure you of your sickness and your disease. But are you looking to Jesus? Or are you looking to your doctor? Jesus said he is your healer. Remember he said I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now you have to remember that who are you waiting on? Jesus is your healer. Say she had been to doctors for years and none of the doctors could heal her, heal her but she grew worse she had money she spent all of her money trying to get the doctors to heal her but what happened they couldn't heal her she grew worse but she had heard something she heard and she came behind him and touched the hem of his garment what did she say she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She was made whole. And when she came to Jesus, she said, told him all what had happened and how the blood had stopped immediately. And by his stripes, she was healed immediately and made whole after all those years. Remember, Jesus is your healer. God bless you.